Hi everybody, Brian Norcross here with a midday Sunday update on Tropical Storm Milton, soon to be Hurricane Milton. Uh, NOAA research aircraft are in the storm and they've detected uh, an eye wall trying to form and other signs that uh, this is going to be a hurricane sooner rather than later, earlier than forecast. And indeed, the National Hurricane Center has upped the maximum uh, intensity, the peak intensity that we think the storm will attain about Tuesday as it moves in the direction of the west coast of Florida. There are other adjustments in the forecast track to, to talk about here, but we're starting with a stronger storm than forecast and a little farther south, which might affect what happens on downstream when we get to Wednesday when Hurricane Hilton is forecast, or Hurricane Milton is forecast to hit the west coast of Florida. All right, so there's where the storm is now. For the radar coming out of South Texas, we're only able to see the uh, kind of northern part of the storm. But as I said, NOAA research uh, airplanes in there, and uh, your government is going to do everything possible to make the best forecast by sending waves of uh, aircraft and hurricane hunters in there and all around it to monitor the atmosphere. And now we have these drones that go out and fly around to get the best possible data to make the best possible forecast. That's going to happen over the next few days. 65 mile an hour winds is the latest estimate for the peak winds uh, up significantly today. East northeast at six the, or east southeast at six, east southeast, so a little bit south. So that little bit of south uh, movement is interesting on how that might affect the forecast later on. Pressure way down the 991 millibars. So the pressure is dropping, the winds are going up, and uh, other signs that the storm is intensifying. That little bit of southward movement means now we have a tropical storm watch for the northern part of the Yucatan Peninsula down there for edge effects from this system. We have really two separate systems now. This is, of course, the tropical storm. This is another system that involves a front and another area of low pressure that all came out of that same big low pressure system out of Central America, but it is going to cause heavy rain in some parts of Florida today. Flood watches are in effect for parts of the state. Southeast Florida, metropolitan Miami, Fort Lauderdale, and the Palm Beaches uh, may get excessive rain because of a confluence of systems coming together right over top of the metro area. So just keep that in mind. This is going to saturate things today into tomorrow, and then that system will move out over the Bahamas. Then for Tuesday, over Florida, we'll get the relatively drier air, and then in moves the uh, tropical storm or hurricane, a very likely strong hurricane, uh, looks like later in the day on Wednesday. That's the timing right now. All right, let's look close up at it. And what you see, you see the thunderstorms bubbling up here uh, in the northern side of the storm, whenever you see that, an indication of strengthening, you can kind of make out a little eye wall, looks like it's forming right in there. And you also see kind of bands look like they're getting more circular in shape, all signs of an intensifying storm moving off, remember, just a little bit south of uh, due east into the very warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Here's the way the model uh, analyzes it. And you can see the yellows now popping out right in there. See that? The yellows up here in the 60 to 100 mile an hour range. We have a 65 mile an hour storm, so we expect that. We also notice that the winds are not very widespread. This is a small core. Well, so two things about a small core. One is that it doesn't make as much storm surge, doesn't put as much energy into the water while it's small like that. But also, there's not as much air that's spinning around, and therefore, it doesn't take as much for it to spin faster. And so small core storms tend to intensify quickly. They can also weaken more quickly if the environment becomes more hostile. Right now, the environment ahead looks very conducive for strengthening. So that's what the National Hurricane Center is indicating uh, will happen. So uh, we, we we're monitoring this buoy, by the way, which is right near the system, gusting up in the 40s here all morning, but it just shows you how small the system is when, when something that close is, 
is kind of consistent there in the 40s. So here's the forecast now. This takes you in to tomorrow morning. So when we see here Sunday p.m., we're talking about this evening, uh, already a hurricane this evening now is the current thinking. Tomorrow morning up to a 100 mile an hour hurricane as it slowly moves on across this part of the Gulf of Mexico. This is, remember, it's only going six miles an hour now and it's only slowly going to pick up its forward speed. That'll begin to change tomorrow. We can see the distance between these lines between here and here and here and here, you see it's increasing an indication that it's every it's take is going farther in 12 hours, so it's moving faster through that time. And look, we have uh, we start out tomorrow morning at 100, then by tomorrow evening 115, 125, and then kind of leveling off through Tuesday. But how strong it gets in this area on Tuesday is a bit of an open question. There are computer forecasts that say, well, it's just not gonna strengthen that that much. It's gonna be a hurricane, but it's not gonna strengthen that much. Others say, no, the upper level winds are actually gonna become very conducive up here, and it's gonna be a category five hurricane. Not a big category five, but winds like super strong in this area. So that's an open question at this point. The Hurricane Center going middle ground at this point, saying 125 mile an hour category three, top end category three. But if they're forecasting category three, we've got to think category four at least at that point. But then in the time that it gets from this kind of pristine uh, environment here on Tuesday until it gets to the state, lots of things are going to happen in the atmosphere. Now, to what degree those things impact it remains to be seen. A couple of impacts might, might uh, be more likely though. One is that it starts to weaken a little bit. This Wednesday morning, we're talking about the morning hours, 8 a.m.-ish nominally uh, on Wednesday morning. The center is somewhere here uh, uh, in this vicinity. Think about it. Yes, it could be ashore by that time if it speeds up some. If it speeds up some, it's likely to be stronger. If it slows down some, those atmospheric changes are more likely to affect it more. The other atmospheric change that could come along as a result of all this is that it gets bigger in size. Bigger in size means more storm surge over a wider area. So obviously, if the storm is moving in here and it ends up coming somewhere near the Tampa Bay area, then we have significant storm surge down the whole west coast of Florida. If it's more down here, southwest Florida becomes more the focus and the keys. Uh, this won't be like Helene so much in that Helene, remember, was moving north to south out here. Uh, I didn't draw that very well, but north to south out here. And so in Helene, uh, the reason we got so much storm surge along the coast was because the back side of it the, was able to push the water in because it was such a big diameter storm. This isn't going to be that way. This is going to be a different kind of thing. Wherever this storm makes landfall, then the, so the winds are going to come in like this, much closer to the center, and we're going to end up with an area with a big peak of storm surge just because I'm drawing it down to Charlotte Harbor and, and uh, down to the Fort Myers area. Uh, it, um, imagine this anywhere in the cone. The difference here is gonna be, we're gonna have this big peak uh, near the track and to the south of the track, and then it will be somewhat less uh, going on farther south. So different kind of distribution where in Helene, it was relatively even all the way up the coast within a, a foot or two. In this case, it'll be multiple feet more in that area just south of where the center comes ashore, wherever it is. If it's up in here, then we're talking about massive storm surge, uh, nothing like it in modern time coming into Tampa Bay. Uh, if we're talking about it down here somewhere where it puts storm surge somehow into the Fort Myers area where uh, Ian hit was so bad uh, a couple years ago, well, this will be different because the angles will be different. So it won't be maximum exactly where Ian's maximum was because it'll drive the water at different angles in and around the islands, around Sanibel and around Pine Island and uh, up into the river. And, and so it's too early to try and 
predict that, but I just don't want anybody in Southwest Florida to think, well, if we get the storm surge, I was okay. And Ian, I'm not going to get that much this time because of the way you're shielded. But if the angle of that water movement is different, it can change all kinds of things about where it comes in. Now, an unfortunate thing, once again, with this one is that loop current, which has the maximum amount of hurricane energy, is uh, going to be right in the track again. So again, this is the Tuesday time frame, I was saying, where this has the what appears to be the most opportunity to intensify. Uh, so we're just going to keep that in mind, that this, this is like hurricane jet fuel here in that uh, loop current. And then what happens up in here is uh, the open question that we can't really completely answer. Notice that the models still dip to the right side, they're coming a little farther south, and then they wanna go uh, up north. What's happening here is there's gonna be a dip in the jet stream that's coming along. First of all, it's going to drive the system to the west. But then as the orientation of that changes, it's gonna be more of a scoop and wanna try and pull it north for a while, and then it's gonna kind of flatten out again. And so that's why we get some kind of an S going on here, exactly the contours of that S. Of course, we can't know exactly, and that's why the models are somewhat different. The, what we normally wanna look at, and the Hurricane Center uh, uses to, to uh, put the center of the cone, is the consensus forecast. Now, we see the consensus now on the right side of the cone. Why is that? Because the consensus has moved uh, here in the information that we have from the various computer forecasts uh, now, and they don't want to jump on it because all of it all at once. So they nudge the cone to the south some in that direction. If we get more information in, now that we have better data from the storm, now that we know better what that storm initial storm track is and so forth, if the computer forecasts that come in later still uh, indicate it farther south, then the whole cone is going to shift farther south. And obviously that increases the odds farther south on the peninsula of the worst storm surge. Although uh, because of effects of the upper level winds, this is going to be a situation where it's not going to be completely that the dirty side of the storm is on, on this side. Indeed, the biggest storm surge will always be to the right, but in October storms, when you get a lot of jet stream energy north of them, you can get very strong winds uh, and very heavy rain on the left side of the storm. So this is a little different kind of uh, situation. All right, when we look at the uncertainty models that we can look at uncertainty both right and left and along the track, here we are at 8 p.m. on a Wednesday. We only have the GFS models. The, the system has to get a little farther east before we can get the European ones in here. So you see that some move it faster, some move it slower, but the Hurricane Center goes with a consensus that generally Wednesday early evening plus or minus is when the system would make landfall there on the west coast, somewhere uh, on the west coast. And then it generally moves offshore. A few linger back here, but we're, we're thinking they're outliers and we're not really paying attention uh, to that possibility. So here's the idea. The computer models have this kind of grouped over here. One little change, though, is the GFS that had it up here now has it down here. So we'll just keep that in mind as we go forward. But what I want you to notice, the main thing about Tuesday is we, we have this kind of core here that's pretty tight. It's a small core. And remember, it's going to be running over that uh, loop current and the uh, extreme heat in the Gulf of Mexico. We have all this dry air in here. This is all very dry. And the question is, does that any of that get pulled in to the circulation? Uh, that kind of remains to be seen. Uh, and we have dry air here trying to pull up. We also have this other system here. This is the one that's causing all the rain today and into tomorrow. And then we'll get kind of a break here on Tuesday with less widespread rainfall. And then we wait on this back here. All right, so that's Tuesday morning. Now let's go to Wednesday morning and take a look here. And what we find is, again, remember the GFS now has moved down here. So we find dry air wrapping up in here. We find the system 
look at all the moisture up on the northern side. It's so we get we get this tropical system. We get these fronts involved. Uh, the system is getting bigger in size. The the circulation extends way down here on the GFS. So it, it grows in size over that last day. So we have uh, perhaps a weaker system with some dry air coming in, uh, but we also have the energy from the jet stream and we have the growth in size, which makes the storm surge extend farther out. So bottom line is, even though we expect a weakening process may take place as it's making landfall, the growth in size may compensate for that in terms of producing storm surge. So uh, a lot to kind of uh, see what's going to happen. If it moves faster, it can beat some of these negative effects on intensity and we end up with a more intense storm. If it moves more slowly, the negative effects on intensity uh, come into play sooner and we'll end up with a weaker but bigger storm. So uh, unknowns uh, at this point. Okay, so here's the uh, other aspect I was talking about, those upper level winds up in here providing energy to this north side of the storm and perhaps unraveling it some, but uh, exactly to what degree with it this close to the coast on Wednesday morning as these upper level winds are ripping on it, it's, it's just uh, too early to say. Bottom line is we have a high level threat uh, on the entire west coast of Florida. And by the way, on across the state, we have the rain, but Remember that if this storm grows and it is accelerating, which is uh, what we expect, we expect an accelerating hurricane, then we're going to get a corridor across the state somewhere with power outages, perhaps flooding rain, and all the other aspects, maybe even some tornadoes as this uh, moves on through. So because we have all this energy in the uh, jet stream that's going to be involved with it as it moves across Florida. So uh, everyone in Peninsula, Florida, Jacksonville, to Cedar Key, to Key West, to Miami, uh, and especially the West Coast needs to uh, be on high alert here and absolutely informed of local instructions. There are going to be evacuation orders. There are going to be everything else that's going to come out uh, here over the next uh, couple of days as the storm approaches the coast and hopefully the track gets a little more refined so we know better where to those evacuations are going to be ordered. So we'll keep you up to date on Fox Weather, of course. If you don't get Fox Weather, tune in to foxweather.tv. Go on your phone or your computer, foxweather.tv. Tell you exactly how to get it on your TV, on your computer, on your iPad, or on your phone. The live channel, Fox Weather, is there all the time. And of course, we'll keep you up to date on what's going on uh, with Milton uh, as we go through this all together. And we don't want to forget all the folks that went through Helene that are still suffering from that, uh, both uh, in Florida where the Big Ben was just uh, devastated and even around the Tampa Bay area and down in Southwest Florida. Unfortunately, folks uh, on the West Coast there are going to experience this again, uh, perhaps thankfully not so much in the Big Bend. It doesn't look like right now. Okay, uh, that's it for now. Uh, stay uh, up to date. And of course, we'll be with you here through the entire event. Thanks.